Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I trust everyone is well. I know it is a little late, but all the best for 2022. My name is Charles Scott from Civil Designer Software. Thank you for allowing the time to join us today for the first of this two-part mini-series focused on the 3D drive-through and rendering visualization functionality included in the Civil Designer CAD Pro module. As attendees of today's webinar, you will be entitled to a 60-day trial version of our CAD Pro module, which will include all the functionality we will be demonstrating today and next month. The CAD Pro trial licenses will run as an add-on to an existing version 8.4 or 8.5 Design Center module. So, after today's webinar, please visit our CAD Pro webpage on www.civildesigner.com, click on the CAD Pro Extended Trial License button and complete this web form, where we will require your license serial number, which begins with 100. The Trial CAD Pro licenses will then be added to your existing license and will be confirmed by a confirmation email sent to the supplied address. In the modern design office, during all stages of the design process, not just the advanced final stages, immediate internal three-dimensional rendering of a project can be used to check the integrity of the proposed civil infrastructure services, spatial coordination, construction accessibility, and service maintainability. So what is meant by internal three-dimensional rendering? This is direct rendering, which is internally created and then viewed in our design software application meaning there is no need to export a large file out of a design software application to be saved, opened, rendered, and then only viewed in a third-party rendering software application, with this process needing to be repeated for absolutely every single design change. Civil Designers Integrated Internal Three-Dimensional Visualization thus allows for the real-time comprehension of vast amounts of consolidated live data enabling the easy identification of possible design issues, improvements, and the communication of the design itself at any stage to all project role players, technical and non-technical. Demonstrating this functionality over the next two webinars will be Cameron Boyle from our Johannesburg office. During Cameron's presentation today, please feel free to use the text chat service on your GoToWebinar app or web page to ask us any questions you may have during his time. After today's webinar, we'll post a video copy on our website in the webinar section. So, good afternoon again, Cameron, and please take it away. Thank you, Charles. Hi, everyone. Have you ever wondered how Civil Designer's 3D rendering is achieved? Ever watched one of our other webinars and thought that your company could benefit from these 3D fly-throughs, but you're not quite sure where to start? Well, in that case, you are in the right place. Welcome. Today's objective is to show you how you are able to achieve the 3D fly through using Civil Designer's powerful CAD Pro functionality. I'm going to be breaking the different modules of this project up into individual segments and show you the tools that you are able to utilize to take your designs to the next level. If you go and right click with your mouse, and your render view option is grayed out, it means that you don't have the CAD module active. If you're not sure which modules you have, you can always go to Help, About Civil Designer, click on Authorizations, and all the modules that you have active will be displayed. With the CAD module active, if you go to the different menus, you'll see that the functions associated with the drop-down menus are active. When I do the different modules, I want you to be able to see a dynamic update of the drawing in the render view. So in that case, I'm going to go to my system settings, go and select render view settings, and then change the render to a separate window. Next up, I'm then go to the different modules and work with their display settings. So I go to the display settings icon, I'm going to start with the water settings. Turn that off, looking at the stormwater or surface drainage, sewer or foul water, roads, and then to finish off with looking at the surfaces. If you want to see your surfaces in the rendering, you need to ensure that the shading is switched to yes. Next up, I'm going to go and turn off all my external drawing references. 
and then lastly I'm going to go and turn off some CAD layers so I go to a CAD group right click and select make group invisible let's take a look at what this looks like in rendering so there you can see the drawing on the left on the right is the render view that will dynamically update you have the option to change your view using the cube on top or you can use the toolbars on the right hand side when working with the display settings of your surfaces you have the option of switching on your banks for individual surfaces another thing to take into account is the surface order or display order of your surfaces this can be updated by selecting the shade order option and then moving let's say surface number one down to the last used surface clicking on OK pointing out that the shading order has been updated accordingly switching off the shade transparency option really enhances the shade order effect press S on the render for dynamic update as can be seen even though the platform surfaces are turned on in the display settings you are not able to see them just to reiterate the importance of shade ordering Returning the shade ordering to the default is easily achieved by clicking on the reset button. I'm going to turn the shading option on again in order to see the pipes that are beneath the ground. Let's take a look at the water network first. Switching the display on, this show water entities as 3D entities is applicable to the drawing window. All the modules will be displayed in 3D when viewed in the render view. After pressing S, the surface platforms together with the water network is visible. Changing my defined viewport and looking at our water network. Perhaps this underground valve needs closer inspection. Moving on to the next module, we then look at the surface drainage or stormwater module. Going back to my display settings, selecting storm settings and turning on the display. Once you have your different modules displayed, it may be that you're concerned about your clashes. Civil Designer makes clash detection very easy. This can be achieved by selecting your stormwater module, going to auxiliary services and selecting clashes. Specify the different modules you want to check the clashes between specify which settings you want to use for your CAD information and then select check you can browse through the different clashes and you can go and right click and select show clash plan view will be updated and if you want to go and view it in the render you can zoom in and check your clash you can view the clash from any perspective allowing you to make an informed decision on what other design alternatives are available to any unique situation. Looking at the stormwater manual, you are able to go and customize the display settings for this. You are given the option to create a new node type, change the node display material, specify the node shape, as well as browse through the numerous different options available when selecting a lid type. These node types will be updated after a successful analysis has been run. Moving on to the next module, we're going to focus our attention on the sewer or foul water module. Going back to my display settings, selecting sewer settings and switching it on. You can go and specify if you want the sewer entities displayed in your 3D rendering and it could include your sewer annotations. You could go and change or update your nodes, links and earth connections. Additional information can be obtained by right clicking. Taking a look at what our sewer network looks like, there you can see the sewer in red. I've also included the house connections. Let's take a look at the entire network using Civil Designer's full-on integration to our advantage. The last module I want to look at is the roads. So I'm going to go and focus in on this particular road over here and change my zoom view. 
If you're looking at the roads, you want to ensure that your road is designed as a string road. This is achieved by going to File, Select Road File, and when you specify which road you want to design, click on the Control Panel and specify the Generation option as strings. If you've already done it as a cross-section, not to worry, Civil Designer can very easily convert all your roads into a string road. Looking at the numerous options available to you as far as road display is concerned, you have the option to turn on your roads, make them all visible, and then go to your road shading. You can display your final design mesh or your SSG mesh, or you could do them all at the same time. Switching on the transparent shading, so again you can view your pipes beneath the ground. Once your display is updated and your roads is turned on, you can still very easily see what's beneath the ground. Taking our road display to the next level, I'm then go back to our display settings. I'm then to turn off the transparent shading. And then looking at textures, at the bottom here you can go and specify if you want a certain color or texture for the entire project. And there's 40 textures to choose from. Alternatively, you can go and customize individual road settings. You've got different pen colors and you've got different textures to choose from. Having done that, if you were to click on OK, and update your render view, if you don't see your textures present, it's because you haven't turned them on in your render settings. In that case, once again, you would go and right click, select render settings, and then enable textures. You can go and specify your maximum texture size and your texture quality. Click on OK. Let's take a closer look at the textures. Let's complete the integration and bring back some CAD elements into our project. I'm going back to my external drawing references, loading all of them. Going back to my CAD layers and turning on a selected few. If you get this additional message, it means a CAD layer contains images that can be draped onto your terrain surface if you wish. In my case, I'm going to select No. The CAD layers are displayed in the render view. Let's take a closer look at the full integration of our site. As a recap, we looked at the DTM surface with additional platform designs. We looked at the three different pipe modules and checked for clashes. We also displayed our roads in different formats. Lastly, we switched on the 3D CAD entities. This brings us to the next step. What options are available to enhance your 3D renders? In order to explain this, I'm going to System Settings, Render Settings, and looking at the options available to us. On the top, looking at the Render Mode, it's probably best to select something with the shading option. You can go and specify which colors you want to use for your ambient and light. And this image gives you a very nice background. You can go and specify what file type you're looking at. This image I'll use at a later stage. I'm then go and turn off the enable textures. And at the bottom for now, I'm going to turn off this render to a separate window. 
I'm going to exit the render in order for those settings to take place. And once again, I'm going to go and right click and select render view. Changing my zoom view, I'm going to explain the fog setting. So positioning myself, I'm then going to right click again, select render settings and switch on the fog or haze. That is the distance in drawing units. I've gone and selected two kilometers there. So as I zoom out, you'll see eventually your site becomes the same color as your drawing background. Zooming in, you have less fog or haze. Going back to the render settings, switching off the fog haze option. Don't forget this background image, we are still getting there. Before we do that, before we do that, I want to show you some ground plane environmental settings. There's numerous options to choose from, one of them being checkerboard. My personal favorite is the rough ocean, as well as a calm ocean. Reverting back to none, and then using that background image that we specified in the render settings, selecting plane. It uses the image that you specified, and in addition to that, you can go and use your ground plane. What's very nice about this is you can go and change the elevation of the rough ocean in this case. Reverting back to the none option for the ground plane and then using the custom preset environmental settings. Let's look at how you go about achieving the fly through. If you've been wondering what the yellow line on the dual carriageway is, it's a 3D polyline that is going to be used as a target path. In other words, my camera is going to follow this target, the camera path being indicated by this white spline that I drew inside the CAD module. If you go and right click in the render view, the option of fly through will appear. Here you go and specify which paths to use for your fly through. Reading the prompt, it says indicate the entity to use as camera path. Selecting the white spline and having the option to give it a customized name. Now looking at the target path, click on add. Reading your prompt, it says indicate entity to use as a target path. Zooming in to the yellow 3D polyline, you are able to click on it as an identification of the target path. You can go and specify the motion speed either by specifying the actual speed in kilometers per hour or specifying the duration in seconds. You can turn on the option to hide camera path and then select run fly through. If you want to stop the simulation you can hit spacebar and hitting spacebar again will continue with the simulation. Looking at the other options available to us, we have the option to reverse the direction of the simulation and then further down the list we also can enable Civil Designer's video capture where you can go and specify a file name for the AVI. According to your project specifications you can customize the output resolution and the frame rate. looking at the simulation in a reverse direction. In this example, we went and defined a camera path and a target path, which was ideal for a project like this because we had the integration of all the modules. But what if you were to want to drive down a highway design, for example? That too is possible. In order to explain this, I'm going to go and close this project for now and move on to the next project. With the project open, let's look at the extent of the highway we then drive down.
right click, select render view, and in my case I'm going to say no to the additional images that I can drape onto the terrain surface. Once you're in the rendering, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. If you right click in an area where there are numerous roads, you have the option to select which road you want to fly along. You can see the road being highlighted as you place your cursor on the different options. I want to fly along the main road, so I'm going to right click on the main road and select fly along road entity. The simulation speed can be altered by either using your mouse wheel, pressing the plus or negative symbols on your keyboard, or selecting this appropriate icon on the bottom toolbars. If I want to unlock the view, I can press V on the keyboard and the view will follow the position of my cursor. Pressing V again will lock it. I can also move up and down, left and right. Or I can use the arrows on my keyboard. Moving up, shifting towards the left, shifting towards the right, and then slowly progressing to be beneath the ground. As I approach these pipes, I'm going to slow the speed down somewhat, press V. As we've all learnt, that yellow balloon indicates that we've got clashes beneath the ground. You can view this clash from any perspective. You can also view the rendering in a reverse direction. Different colors on our road indicates the water film thickness functionality. If you'd like to find out more about this function, please view our previous webinars. Using the drone approach and flying along the road and then speeding things up using my mouse wheel. Selecting the different environments. This is really nice when you're presenting this to your client. You can choose from our preset environmental settings or you can go and customize them. You aren't limited to driving just along one road. You can press escape on your keyboard as a handbrake and then go and right click on another road and select to fly along that road entity. As you approach this intersection or as some people prefer to refer to as a junction, you have the option to take screenshots. Before I do that, I'm going to press escape on my keyboard again. Then I can press control and a number on my keyboard. That will define a viewport. I'm pressing control number seven in my case. And then it's very easy to just click on your mouse and then move it in any direction. If I want to revert back to the screenshot, I can go and press the appropriate number on the keyboard. If you want to liven up your screenshot, you have the option of bringing back that image, the background image I referred to in the previous project. This is really ideal for your presentation purposes. Reverting back to the night preset setting, using these defined viewports, you are able to save them and review them at a later stage. It may be important parts of your project that you need to go into more detail. You can also utilize these toolbars on the right hand side. As an example, you have the option of enabling or disabling the light and you can go and customize the light settings. Further down the list, you have the option to zoom out, zooming in. You can rotate at 90 degree angles, left and right or clockwise and anti-clockwise. And then also a very nice function is to be able to circle around. If you right click, select circle around, you can go and view, let's say, this interchange from a 360 degree perspective. Looking at the rotation mode, we currently have a turntable option active. This can be changed by selecting the bottom icon on the right. With this option selected, the movement of the drawing is more controlled 
and the rotation of the drawing is as if it were a turntable that is only rotated about a single axis. Even when pressing control key at the same time and avoids any unwanted tilting, in most cases you should use the turntable option. The other option being the arc ball option as the name suggests rotates the project as if there is a big transparent ball around the portion of the drawing you are looking at. Therefore the movement is more evident. An unlevel horizon can be corrected by selecting this level view icon. That's about all the time we have for today. Please feel free to send us any questions on today's webinar and I'll try and answer them in the second CAD Pro webinar. In addition to that, we'll also be looking at the reality mesh and the terrain display settings. Until then, cheers for now. Back to you, Charles. Thank you very much, Cameron. That was awesome. And more importantly, thank you very much to all of you who attended today's first of our two-part CAD Pro webinar series. As Cameron said in his closing, please feel free to send any questions or topics you would like Cameron to cover in next month's CAD Pro webinar to the email address listed on your screens right now. Additionally, should you require any further information with regards to today's demonstration, please use the same address. Please also remember to visit our website's CAD Pro page to request your 60-day CAD Pro trial license by completing the CAD Pro Extended Trial form. Please then feel free to browse through the rest of our website and follow us on LinkedIn where we are now nearing 5,000 followers, all enjoying our weekly technical tips, customer showcase stories and industry news posts. Once again, thank you very much for your time today. See you on the final Thursday of next month. Have a great afternoon, weekend, and goodbye for now.